Hi everybody and welcome to Weight Loss, Psych Weight Loss Psychology. Oh yeah, I'm getting all tripped up this today. Um, episode five, we're gonna talk about habits and how to end the bad ones because of course we all have them. Especially when it comes to our health goals, sometimes it's really frustrating because we're so ingrained in certain things that we do, like I don't know, eating when we're stressed out, that it's really a struggle to try and stop that bad habit. So we're gonna talk about what our options are with that, um, the process of figuring out what habits you do need to change um, and what to replace them with because that is the number one tip that I have for trying to end bad habits is you can't just take away. You can't just resolve that and get rid of that bad habit. You actually have to replace it with a good habit because something has to take that space. Our body and our subconscious does not like to lose things. We don't like for things to disappear. We have to put something in place of that. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Um, but let's talk really quickly about the bad habits that we might have. Now, Granted, they're all over the place, I'm sure. You know, everything from not making it to the gym, even though you're planning on it like every day, um, to eating things, I don't know, like like I do. I eat my feelings, I do, I'm not gonna lie. It's something that I struggle with. Um, I'm, I'm a little bit better at it than I used to be, but it is a struggle to, you know, when I get stressed out and I can feel that cortisol coming on, I'm like, oh, where's the chocolate? So, I know, it's just thing, things that we have to work with. Now, of course, for me, I've just learned better coping mechanisms, better coping skills, so I don't quite have that same issue. Um, I'm not immune. It still happens. But, you know, it's a, it's a habit that I've been able to kind of over time um, do better at, right? So, think about what your habits are that you'd like to get rid of. Um, you can even comment down below because sometimes it's kind of fun to see what other people struggle with. You know, what you're going to find is we all have a lot in common, right? You know, whether that's because because, you know, every it, something habit is something that's ingrained because you do it over and over again and then you eventually do it without thinking about it, such as maybe you get home every night, you throw the keys down and the first thing you do is pour yourself a glass of wine. Or maybe you, you put your clothes out to go to the gym every morning, but you hit snooze 20 times. So it doesn't necessarily have to be a, a health-based goal. It can be any goal um, that we struggle with because we have some bad habits in place. And again, we all have them. This is not new. You're, you're not abnormal. We're going to struggle with that. So the best way to get through it, the first thing we're going to do is w there's a kind of a process that we need to go through. And the first thing we need to do is we need to actually identify the trigger what what you know what makes us do that what is it that happens that we just regularly we do it we don't even think about it it's kind of like you know when you get used to driving to work you know and you don't think about it anymore and all of a sudden you're there and you're like how did i get there i didn't have to think about it your subconscious has to take over you can't pay attention to everything all the time so you know at some point your body gets used so used to, your subconscious gets so used to doing it you don't even have to think about it you just do it um case in point years ago when i was competing i was making a batch of cookies or something for somebody because i was like you know i can make it i just like to smell them i don't necessarily need to eat it and I caught myself licking the spoon because that's something that I would always do. And that was, of course, the bad habit that I was, was like, oh, I can't do that. I was in the middle of a competition prep, so really not my smartest idea. But it's something that happened and I realized, wow, that's something I'm going to have to figure out how to stop doing. So the first thing is to identify the trigger, figure out what causes you to do that or makes you want to do that. Um, and, and you know, it's not a bad idea to journal that either because it helps you to kind of identify and pay attention next time because you know, okay, if this happens, then I tend to do this, right? Number two, you're going to have to disrupt it somehow. So whether that's, you know, if, if you find that you're throwing your keys down and coming into the house through a certain door, maybe you need to come through the other door and put your keys somewhere else because then it, you're not headed for that, that bottle of wine. Or for like me, I know that I just don't bring the chocolate home because then it's not a problem if it's not in my house because rarely am I going to actually get up when I'm stressed out, get in my car, go to the store. Like I'm not. Now if I'm already there, different ball game. But because I've done this for a while, I don't tend to bring that home anyway because I know better. Now that, again, not always true, but for the most part, it is true. Number three, you do have to replace that bad behavior, bad behavior or bad habit with a good one. So figure out, and it can't be complicated, guys. It can't be complicated or it won't happen, but figure out what is required. You know, what can you put in place of that in order to make it a better option? So, you know, maybe you're going to have to move going to the gym from the morning because you just can't seem to get out of bed to right after work on the way home. You know, whatever that is, replace that habit with something else. Um, you, again, you're going to know better than I am, but if you if you need some help with that, yeah, give me a call. Um, it's something that I've been working on for quite a while, but you're going to have to replace that. That's really important. Like I said, your body does not like loss. It doesn't. The same thing if you tell yourself all the time that I need to lose weight, your body's going to you're going to struggle with that. You're subconscious because you don't want to lose things. It's not a positive situation, right? All right, number four. Again, keep it simple, sustainable. Don't first of all, don't try to change too many bad habits at once because you don't want to change too many things at once. When you do that, what happens is you get overwhelmed super super quickly. Or if something in your life happens 
you're going to struggle because that's just, it's too much, too many things happening at the same time and you can't deal with all of them at once. So, you know, keep it simple, change one or two habits at a time, work on that. And then once you have that down, then you can work on another one. Number five, think long term. You know, a lot of times those habits are because it's a quick reflex, right? Like if I'm stressed out, I'm like, oh my gosh, I need that dopamine hit. I am so stressed out. I don't like how I feel right now. I, if I get that chocolate, I'm going to get that sugar rush and it's going to give me the dopamine hit. And I'm going to feel better, right? But if I turn around and go, yeah, but you know, I'm going to go on a vacation in a few weeks and I really want to wear a bikini and feel good about it. I'm going to rethink that, right? So part of it is your why has to be bigger than your obstacles, right? You, you've got to want the, you've got to want the goal. You want to want to, got to want to get there before, um, before then. Uh, so number six, um, persist, right? Um, part of it is making sure you keep going, making sure you keep working at it. Um, we're all gonna fall down. We are. It's it's about getting back up. Now you've probably heard, you know, twenty one days create a habit. Um, yes and no. It's really easy to go backward, even after twenty one days. You have to make sure that you're giving it enough time, enough practice in order to do that. Um, but I do tell people that you know it takes at least ninety days to create a lifestyle. So if it's something that you're working towards and something that you want to keep, because whatever you do to get to your goal, you have to keep doing to stay there. So keep that in mind that it's, it's yeah, you're gonna have to keep practicing it. It's one of the reasons why, again, I tell you not to make too many changes all at once and that, you know, it's gonna have to take some time because honestly, if you reach your goal in 30 days, are you really gonna stay there? Probably not because you haven't put the things in place. You haven't resolved the issues that you had that got you where you were in the first place. You haven't put the habits in place in order to not just get there, but stay there. You're gonna kind of go backwards. I've been there, I understand how that works. So you wanna make sure you give yourself enough time in order to feel good about it and make those changes and create those new habits, right? So, you know, it's again, it takes some time. Don't be in a hurry. I, I, I do, I get it. I totally get it. We all want to see results yesterday before we even got started, you know, especially while we're still excited. And then when we don't see, you know, these crazy results within a couple of days, we get frustrated and a lot of us quit. That's not how this works. It's really about figuring out your body, your system, figuring out your groove, what works for you. Maybe it's different from what works for me making sure that you understand how your body works, how long it takes to hit those goals, um, and not just that, but the, to also maintain them. So be realistic. That's part of it is understanding how it works. Most of us underestimate how much it's, how much it's going to take or how long it's going to take, and we overestimate how much we can accomplish in a very short amount of time. So giving yourself enough time is really super important. Um, and again, it's going to take some time to change those bad habits. Now, not a bad idea to ask for an accountability partner, especially if you're struggling a little bit, or, you know, make some friends that are in a similar situation, similar goals from you, and they might give you some great ideas and tips on what worked for them. And that's what being part of a community does, is helping other people say, okay, I have that same problem, and here's what, has what worked for me, right? So again, you know, I've been there. I've been at both ends of the spectrum. I've been completely unhealthy. I've, I've weighed 210 pounds at five foot two. I know the challenges that come along with trying to be healthy, but it takes some time. I've been in this lifestyle of health and fitness now for almost 12 years, so we know that it's doable. Again, I just had to find the right thing that worked for me and find, find my groove, and that's what it took. So have an incredible night, you guys. Hopefully you are seeing this. If you're seeing this on Facebook, just definitely leave a comment below. See, what, Tell me what you think. Um, if you're seeing this on YouTube, please, you can hit that subscribe button, the notification bell, and anything else that pops up for the next little while you're going to see. Because, you know, it's not just the physical part that is difficult when it comes to your health and fitness goals. It's the mental and emotional part that really can keep you from getting where you want to go. Have an incredible night, you guys. Stay tuned.